Welcome back everybody. Today in this video we're going to be talking about installing the Rainbird 3500 nozzle and how to look at the charts to know which nozzle to select and install on your sprinkler head. First of all let's look at the Rainbird's website and the charts for the nozzles and get a better understanding about what each nozzle allows you to do. So over here at the Rainbird website, underneath the, the documents and the charts, you can see we have this chart here for the Rainbird 3500. And uh, it's gonna give you different options for pressure and PSI. And that's referring to the pressure at your sprinkler head. What they, what they engineer the heads to operate at is usually right around this 45 PSI marking right here. As you'll see in the next column, the nozzles have uh, different numbers next to them. And here, I've already removed one of them, but as you can see in the inside circle that they have different numbers starting with 0.75 and going up all the way to four. And so as we look at this chart, we can see that uh, next to the 45 PSI, if we were to select the 0.75, um, nozzle, then that's going to give us um, a radius uh, of 17 feet. So it's going to throw or spray the water out 17 feet if we have 45 uh, PSI at that head. Now if we were to go to the other extreme and install the 4.0 nozzle, that's going to spray 35 feet, um, thus, the, thus the name of this, this rotor head, the 3500. Now, now look at the similarities under the 45 PSI. You can see that if we select the 4.0 nozzle, it's uh, going to be pushing out uh, approximately four gallons per minute. So in this column, flow is in gallons per minute. And for if we have 45 PSI at our head, it's going to be spraying out four gallons or 4.13 gallons per minute. And likewise, down at the 0.75, you have close to 0.75 gallons per minute at 0.77. Um, and then we have everything in between. So then talking about these last two columns, uh, precipitation uh, rates. So these are always measured in inches an hour. And there's two columns. The first column talks about, uh, this refers to your design of your sprinklers. So if you have them in a, in a square uh, to where there's a head at each corner, um, then that's gonna give you a precipitation rate. Say if we were to have the 45 PSI and say uh, we installed the 2.0 here, the 2.0 is gonna uh, put out roughly two gallons per minute. And the precipitation rate for that one is 0.51 in the square design or formation. And then if we were to have a triangular formation of our sprinkler heads where there's three sprinkler heads, one at each vertice, then that will give us 0.59, so a little more. This is the amount of water uh, that that area that it's spraying is getting per hour. And just remember with these precipitation rates, it's based off a half circle uh, operation. As we can see down here at the bottom of the footnotes, um, it's based on a half circle operation and um, and the precipitation rates are also uh, based on zero wind conditions as well as 50% uh, overlap, meaning this head's gonna spray and over to the next head. So they have that radius overlap when, when it's designed like that. So there we have the charts to kind of understand uh, when we're selecting nozzles, how much water it's gonna put out, how far it's gonna spray, and, and it's all under the assumption of how, how much pressure do we have at that given head. Let's go back to the sprinkler head here with the Rainbow 3500. And I've already uh, pulled off or twisted off the 2.0 2 or the two. And uh, it's really easy. All, all you do is when you have them on your uh, thing that just comes right on top of your Rainbird head, you can just twist them and then they'll break off relatively easy. Just remember when, uh, before you install them to make sure that there's no plastic left over from where it was attached to that, the other ones. And you can just scrape it with your Rainbird uh, tool or other flathead if you want. 
um, to just make sure it goes into the uh, mouth of the sprinkler head without getting snagged on that on that uh, plastic piece. So, um, in order to make it a little bit easier to install here for demonstration, I'm just going to take it out of the body, um, and then what I'll do is just hold it like this. So, so when you use your Rainbird tool, or you can also use another flat head, small flat head, you'll want to make sure that uh, when you get into this groove that it actually sinks down into the slot. So you can kind of see right there it's not in the slot and then now it clicks down into that slot. And so you can see right here that there's no nozzle in the head and that the screw is actually sticking down a little bit. So if we were to try to put the nozzle in right now it's not going to go in. We want to retract that screw uh, all the way so that way it's not blocking the, the nozzle when we try to install it. So we'll just back it out a little bit until it's out of the way. And just like that, now it should be out of the way. So when we go to install this uh, nozzle, make sure that you have it facing the right uh, side up. So this is, the, this is the top and that's the bottom and we want it to sit in there just like that. So. I'll show you here. So also when you're installing it, remember or take notice that uh, it actually kind of goes inward like this when we're installing it. So with it facing the right side up like that, and we'll slide it into there. And we want to make sure we push it in all the way to where it's not sticking out from the, the mouth of the sprinkler head. Otherwise, when it retracts, it's going to catch on that and it's not going to retract all the way. So you can kind of see there, we want to make sure it doesn't try to rotate at all. And then we just press it in all the way like that. So now that it's in all the way, now we can start screwing down the screw to hold it in when the water turns on. So we'll, we'll go back there, we'll find the the groove in the screw and we'll start rotating it just like that until the screw comes down to where it's holding the nozzle in, in place. Now if it's not installed all the way then it's going to start pressing against the nozzle and it could break the nozzle so you want to make sure it's pushed back all the way. All right and then once it gets about to that point you should be should, should be good because what we don't want to happen at this point is for it to block the stream of water. So if it is too far down and it's blocking the throw of the water, uh, then you just back it out a little bit and it's still going to be holding that nozzle in. If you don't put this screw down, as soon as you turn the water, that nozzle is going to spray out and you'll probably lose it in your grass. Um, so just make sure you screw that down. Now, um, say when it's spraying, it's just barely hitting the fence. Then what we could do it, with this screw is screw it down just a little bit f farther down. And then it will start, as you see, when it's spraying out, it will start deflecting the water flow. So then it will shorten the distance just gradually. And uh, that way, shortening, shortening the distance. And you can use that screw to shorten the distance up to 25%. If you need to, go shorter distances, then refer back to these charts and say, so this 2.0 nozzle at 45 PSI is gonna spray 27 feet. But say we only needed it to spray um, 21 feet. Then we would just go back here and select the 1.0 that actually sp sprays 21 feet. Because ideally we wouldn't have to use that set screw to shorten the distance if uh, it's just kind of minor adjustments if needed. Now, if we needed to remove that nozzle, then it's just kind of, kind of the opposite, but with a few exceptions. So once we, uh, let's start unscrewing that. So once we unscrew it all the way out of the way, okay, so, and just make sure that your flat head is all the way in the groove so you're not just spinning it and not getting anywhere. So once that screw's out of the way, now, pay attention here. Well, there's a little slot actually underneath right here, if you can see that. 
a slot for the flathead to fit in right there. And then it kind of, you can pry it out carefully um, and it should just pull right back out. Okay, so, and then, so after you get it pulled out, then if you need to swap out to a different nozzle or if you just simply, there's something stuck in the nozzle and you just need to wash it out, you can do that as well. And then you can just uh, take a different nozzle, install it just like we showed you, put the screw back down and you're set to go. So that's how you uh, install the nozzle for the Rainbird 3500 rotor head and also to understand the charts that deal with uh, the nozzles and how much water flow comes out of each. So hope that helps. If you have any questions, leave a comment in, in the comments below and I'll try to get to them. So thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.